All right. Well, welcome everybody to our business uh, waste and recycling webinar. If somebody would just throw in the chat um, that you can hear us, that would be great. Just to make sure everything is working properly. And we will get going. Awesome. It looks like people can hear us. So we'll just really quickly do some introductions and get going. And um, if, if anybody who is joining is like me, we'll probably get a few late <laughs> people joining us late. I'm usually, usually the one scurrying around, grabbing what I need before I sit down at the beginning of something like this. Um, so my name is Cedar Walters and I'm the public information and education officer here at the Ottertail County Solid Waste Department. And I'm joined by... I'm Rena Simon and I'm the recycling manager here with Ottertail County Solid Waste. And I just wanted to give a quick um, shout out to um, the Fergus Falls Area Chamber of Commerce and Purim Area Chamber of Commerce. They helped sponsor this event and they're gonna help provide the uh, one of the prizes for attendees. So at the end, um, we will be drawing two winners and those winners will receive donuts and a recycling bin delivered to their office. And so we'll be trying to find a winner from the Fergus Falls area and then a winner from kind of the Purim Northeast side of the county as well. And then uh, just make sure that you're muted but we do encourage people to throw questions in the chat. Um, I think that is, yep, just that reminder that we'll be checking that a few times and especially at the end, um, we'll, we're trying to plan in some extra time so people can ask questions or have some conversation about what we're talking about today. All right, so, um, you know, I can't talk about recycling without talking about just kind of the, the general picture in terms of waste um, that we're making. And so, you know, in the United States, some of these numbers are so big, it's hard to really ha have a, a picture in your mind of, of what that even looks like, you know, 390 million tons a year um, in terms of what we're making in, for garbage in the United States. It's so big, we can't even really conceive of that. So it's helpful to think of it at the level of a town or a county or a person. Um, and so you're, in your lifetime, you'll make about 102 tons of garbage. And that equals about the weight of nine school buses, the large school buses. So it just gives you something more tangible to think about in terms of what you know, each person is generating. And, it, and then you multiply that times the population of the United States or the county or something. And we really are making mountains of garbage. So um, anything we can do to think about that and think about opportunities to reduce that that garbage and that waste um, is a good thing. And, and it doesn't go away. So the solid waste industry is about a $70 billion interest industry in the United States. Um, so handling waste and recycling, um, it's, it's actually quite costly. And so that's another reason to prevent waste before it happens. And we'll touch on that a little bit later. It just, it doesn't go away. It, it takes a lot to handle it. So nationally, um, this is just kind of the average of how we manage waste right now in the United States. So the gray portion of this um, with the little trash can symbol, we, we do rely heavily on landfilling in the United States as the primary method of waste disposal. Um, that, that's not really a good strategy, and I will talk a little bit about that in a little bit, but that really is mostly what we're doing is putting it in that hole in the ground, and, and we need to try as much as we can to keep moving away from that as our primary method of disposal. We do nationally have about a 34% recycling rate. Um, about 10% now is going to organics recycling or composting programs. Um, that slice hopefully will continue to grow. I know there's programs starting all the time. Um, more information on that. Hopefully you'll hear from Ottertow County in the near future. Um, and then nationally about 10, 10 to 12% goes to waste to energy. That would be that orange slice. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that too. Um, Ottertow County looks a little different. So we don't rely as heavily on landfilling because Ottertow County, along with some surrounding partner counties have invested in waste to energy. Um, that is preferable actually to landfilling alone. There's some benefits to that. 
Um, and so we've invested in that as an environmentally preferable option. So about two thirds of our garbage is going to a waste to energy facility, the Perm Resource Recovery Facility. Um, and then the remaining third go, does go to a landfill in North Dakota because there's just not enough room at that waste to energy facility to handle all of the waste that we generate. And then we, you know, ha have good recycling programs, but um, based on some factors like a rural population that's really far flung or spread out, um, our recycling rate for traditional recyclables, like you would put in a bin at home, um, is a little lower, I would say maybe than the national average, um, and we could be all doing better at that too. And then we have some other programs that do recycle waste, um, like e-waste and electronics and appliances go through recycling programs at our transfer stations, stuff brought through the household hazardous waste program, some of that gets recycled, and then we have a film plastic recycling program um, that takes um, some stuff that I'll again talk about later. So just a tiny bit more information about the Perm Resource Recovery Facility. I just feel it's important people know where that waste is going and uh, what happens to it. So this serves a five county area. It is located in Perm. And as I said before, it's better than just landfilling because it's providing some benefits um, and it's shrinking the volume of the garbage by about 80 to 90 percent. So that little bit that's left is what's landfilled instead of the larger volume that's going in there. It, that system also pulls out additional recyclables from the waste stream, does not replace a recycling program, does not. It can only target certain things like some aluminum cans or, or scrap metal. Um, it really does not replace a recycling program. It doesn't touch things like plastic or paper or other things or, or all of it. Um, um, and then there's a lot of kind of measures in place to prevent pollution from occurring. And then the high heat of combustion, unlike a backyard fire, which um, has a relatively low heat, the high heat in a situation like this does destroy a lot of the harmful compounds. So we do get asked a lot of times why this is okay, but burning your garbage in the backyard is not okay. Um, there are so many measures in place at facilities like this and so many environmental regulations that have to be met that what's coming out is a little bit of water vapor um, and they're really doing their best to capture any of those pollutants and um, that, that are present. It's actually a really cool place. So if you get a chance, there's a four and a half minute video on our YouTube channel that just kind of shows how that facility operates. Um, and, and then landfills, like I said, not a good strategy. It's, it, they're built to store stuff, not to break stuff down. So whatever goes in there, it, it's locked away forever. Um, so they're expensive, they're a long-term liability. There's a lot of cost that goes into building one as well as closing one. You have to monitor it for decades and decades to come. And then the resources, because your garbage really is just a resource. It's made out of resources and we can use those resources um, better. Those resources are lost. So any food waste in there, it's not gonna decompose into new dirt. It's just locked in there um, for our purposes forever. Um, any recyclables that go in there can't be recovered and recycled really. For our purposes, these resources are lost. And just an example of these long-term long -term liability of something like this is the freeway landfill in Burnsville. Um, it was leaking, so they have to literally move like thousands and thousands of garbage trucks worth of waste off the site that was already disposed of and buried. They have to move it off the site, rebuild the site, reline it, put the waste back in, and the cost to clean up that site, which is right next to a river, um, is estimated at about $100 million. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just not good in any way, shape, or form. And so we need to just rely on that less. Um, and then when, when we're reducing waste, there's just so many positive environmental impacts from doing that. So just one example would be climate impacts. You know, climate impacts from deforestation, you're taking away a large... Um, carbon sink anytime you take away trees or take away vegetation um, and then those plants are no longer taking in carbon. Um, and then also anytime that you waste something and you have to remanufacture new stuff like new paper, cut down more trees, that's all taking energy. Um, and so recycling is reducing the energy that's required to make new things. Um, um, just another example of that would be aluminum making aluminum cans out of recycled aluminum takes about only 95% uh, less energy than it does if you have to extract aluminum from ore and make it from that virgin material. So there's a lot of energy savings, which then translated to um, lessening climate impacts. 
And anytime you're not extracting a new natural resource, you are protecting habitat, which protects biodiversity. So if you're concerned about biodiversity lost, loss, um, endangered species, threatened species, this is directly related to extracting too many resources too fast. Um, and, and it's just, that's all linked together. Those are not separate issues. Those are directly linked together. So anytime you can recycle and reduce your waste, you are having a positive impact on protecting biodiversity. That, that's a really big one for me. Um, and, and it's kind of tangible once you think about it that way. And then you're conserving those resources. You're, you're getting the most out of those resources when you, when you are able to recycle them again and again without going back and taking more and reducing that long-term liability like I just was talking about. I'm gonna turn it over to Rena here. Yes, yeah, so Cedar just went over some of the environmental impacts. What are some of the impacts to your business? What could be potential impacts? Um, certainly, where am I? Mm -hmm. Okay, certainly you could think about um, their potential savings on disposal costs, um, less garbage, obviously less of the tipping fee that would be paid for um, disposing of that. You could think about it in terms of purchasing too. You could save money if you can reduce purchasing. One way I think of that, that some business may be able to do that, and it's not, not necessarily um, applicable everywhere, but there are some businesses that have switched to the, the hand dryers versus the paper towels. Just by reducing those paper towels, they could have a, a reduction on their costs. Um, certainly improving company's image. It's becoming more and more important, both internally and externally for, for companies and businesses. Um, people are motivated to work and buy for companies and businesses that have um, a sustainability, have sustainability at mind in their operations. And kind of in addition to that, green workplaces are shown, there's research that actually shows that um, reduction in sick days, productivity is increased, job satisfaction is increased as well, and just helps to retain that talent. That's even more relevant right now, I feel exactly. like. Like you yeah. need to attract and keep those employees. Exactly. Um, so recycling, obviously as a recycling man, well, hopefully as a recycling manager, I'm passionate about recycling. You'd probably be hard pressed to find people more passionate than um, Cedar and myself in recycling. Um, when you think about it, you spend a lot of time at work. So there are a lot of opportunities to recycle. You're creating waste and hopefully recycling that. Some things that I'd like you to keep in mind the do list, so we have the do and don't list. The do list, please flatten boxes, take out all the materials, um, the labels and the tape, that's fine, but that styrofoam, that's a, that's a big issue that we can have to deal with here. Um, keep paper and cardboard clean and dry, contained. Uh, empty and rinse out those containers. I find personally at home, if I can rinse those containers out as soon as possible, that job's a lot easier. I'm or wasting, scrape with a spatula. Yeah, and I'm wasting way less water. So um, keep the caps on containers. So once upon a time, that was not the case, but that has since changed um, over the years. So caps on the containers so that they can also get recycled and, and um, don't get treated as waste. They're so small that they fall through a lot of equipment. Um, and then if you have questions, you can certainly always contact us here in the solid waste department, but you can also check the waste wizard on our website. So you can check um, a variety, well, you can type in any, um, anything that you're curious about recycling, and then hopefully that will come up with some results. If not, then I think it probably tells you to check with us, yep. right? <laughs> <laughs> or you can suggest items. Yes, or if, suggest it. I've done that myself. Yeah, so. If what you've looked up um, is not showing or we don't have that in there, you can suggest that and we'll try and get that added. Yes. Um, the don't list, it's very important. Obviously, like I said, we're passionate about recycling. We wanna recycle what we can that's meant to be recycled in our program. So please don't throw it away. If you throw it away, you're really throwing away a valuable resource. Um, please don't wish cycle. So it used to be um, the, the industry line was when in doubt, throw it out. And I don't, I'm not all right with that either. I don't like that feeling, but I like better when in doubt, find out. 
So like I said, we're always more than happy to talk recycling um, and about waste and things that we can do to improve on our habits. So, but wish cycling, wish cycling, you'd be amazed to find out what people throw out. We could do a whole presentation just on what comes across the line. And it, I promise it would be very entertaining and very sad at the same time. But um, when in doubt, please find out. Kind of related to that. Diapers and needles, obviously, they're never supposed to be in a recycling bin um, for obvious reasons, safety, and they're not recyclable. Um, some people get really excited about recycling electronics and cords, which they can be recycled in different places and programs, but not in your regular recycling bin. And the last don't I want to throw out there is please don't beg your recycling. We have, we have staff here that um, all day long, that's what they do is they open up bags to be able to um, recycle as much as we can. There are some facilities that don't open bags. We do here, but if it's bagged recycling, some places treat it simply as garbage. So um, next I have, it's pretty cool and it's, always good to get a positive message out there. There are great things happening here in Ottertill County with our recycling program. So here you can see just the impact of recycling. We could make 7.6 new million, well, recycled aluminum cans, um, 4.7 million rolls of toilet paper from paper that's recycled, 2.3 million glass bottles. Um, and you may or may not have heard of Al McCann on the local radio stations. Um, he's, he's created some very memorable radio ads that get the word out about recycling. Um, and one I think that's up for an award is maybe about toilet paper and glass bottles or yes, relating to the and pizza them. boxes. And yeah. So, um, yeah, if you haven't heard that, I think we probably will have a clip linked at some point, maybe on our website. Yes, and they are all, uh, you can listen to actually that entire series of Give Waste to New Life radio ads that are quite funny, one of which was nominated for a uh, national award. They're all on our Give Waste to New Life part of the Ottertown yes. County website. So if you need to laugh on a Friday. Yeah, <laughs> check that out after. Um, 11 million new pizza boxes could be made from the cardboard we recycle here in Ottertown County. 1.3 million soup cans. Or, and the equivalent of what would be about 732 average size decks that could be made out of that cool plastic decking. So pretty amazing what's happening here in Ottertill County um, with our, our current tonnage. Mm -hmm. So I just wanna get into some best practices at work. Um, there are a lot of places that are new to setting up their systems and we Cedar will go into it later, but we'd be more than happy to visit or share um, things that can maybe help with those recycling programs at your workplace. Some things we can say for sure, it's always great to have a point person, someone that's excited about recycling um, or waste reduction, even a green team. There are some places that might have a bigger, a bigger company or business that may even have a, a committee dedicated to that. Um, it's always great if the signage can be clear, consistent, so hopefully you can see on the on the photo here of some bins at the GSC, right? Yeah. So at the Government Service Center here in Fergus, we want that to be a clear, consistent message, so um, so that people see that and they can immediately identify and and react quickly. Um, and if that signage can match the local guidelines, like you might see in our our blue um, roll off containers at our sites, that's great too. Um, also, what we find at events, but in the workplace as well, if you can have both the trash and the recycling side by side, then it, it gives people that option and is in and out. If you only have trash bins in one recycle bin, it's way too easy for people to just go to the trash bins. So having that option is great side by side. Oops, clicking on the thing here. And then of course in centralized areas. So to make it as convenient and easy as you can um, and to be able to collect it is a good idea. And then of course, this is probably the biggest thing is um, to communicate with and train your employees on the recycling that you have going on. 
um, or the waste reduction um, initiatives that you have going on at your place of business. So like I said, make it easy. I also added make it fun. I know I had talked with a local um, indus an industrial business here in Ferguson. And I know they said they had a competition with another plant mm -hmm. on their recycling efforts. So any way you can make it fun, of course, that makes work more enjoyable. <laughs> Um, beyond recycling. So like I said, Cedar and I are both passionate about recycling, but we're actually more passionate about something else. And that's really reuse and waste reduction. Um, it, it's even more important than recycling. I'd like to say recycling is the most important, but it's not. So people think it is. Yeah. But once you start thinking about it more. <laughs> so yeah, reduce, reuse, you hear those things, recycle. We also like to think about rethinking, refraining. Um, there are a lot of other rewords that are, that should have as much or more importance than recycling because we can't recycle our way out of this problem that we're in. So this waste problem. Um, not everything, you can see here the product lifestyle product life cycle and it's amazing the amount of energy that goes into each each of those circles um, not everything is or should be recyclable so I think about people ask often about styrofoam or the juice pouches or those things are not recyclable generally not currently in our our current program here in Ottertail County um, and some of them just shouldn't be recyclable um, or are made to not be recycled, I should say. Um, recycling, so it's great, like I said, but it still requires energy, transportation, infrastructure. Um, like Cedar had mentioned, it takes way less energy to create an aluminum can from recycled material than raw material, especially from that extraction point of it. Um, but recycling still requires those things. Maybe not extraction, but the energy transportation infrastructure. Um, thing. And much of that that we do get recycled is downgraded in that downgraded in that recycling process. So it's an inferior product. Um, paper maybe can be recycled. Cardboard maybe up to six or seven mm -hmm. times. Paper, plastic, really, that's not a great number. It's like one, so. one, maybe two times, you know, so you're, although it's still better than landfilling, just right off the bat, you're kind of delaying landfilling right. because it can't be recycled right. over and over. Many things, except for aluminum and glass, a lot of those things have a limited number of times they can go through that cycle before um, it's just the materials degraded. Right. Yeah. Um, one very astounding graphic um, that Cedar has found is this on the, the plastic water bottle. So there's so many people who would just reach for that easy plastic disposable water bottle. And here you can see the impact of that. So the blue line is the plastic bottle's impact on these certain things, energy use, climate change, acidification, ecotoxicity, and human respiratory health. The blue line is no recycling. That red line is if it that it was 80% of it was recycled of the plastic bottles. And then that green line is really cap water, reusing your own cup or glass. And the tap water that's generally, I mean, I don't have percentage, but it's tested, it's safe. Yeah. Um, it could be the same water that's in that plastic bottle to begin yeah. with. So you can see the huge impact. Can anyone see a little green line there? No, because there's so little impact by reusing your um, cup or glass versus having that plastic water bottle. Yeah. So even on the recycling, you can still see the impact of it. And 80%, that 80% recycling rate, that would be the red line, like that's a pretty high recycling mm -hmm. rate. And I think people pat themselves on the back and think, gosh, I'm doing so good because I'm recycling all my plastic water bottles. But when you think about recycling itself, needing that energy infrastructure, it's, it, you know, it, it's a, manufacturing industrial process, it's still having all these impacts mm -hmm. when you're even recycling. It's just not enough to get us to where we need to be. Yeah, and if we can use those resources for other things, yeah. um, that would be preferred, obviously. 
So above and beyond recycling, there are a lot of things. It's my plea and my challenge for you all to think about your workplace and things that could be done. Um, there are some simple things like default to duplex printing. Here, we're able to do that and it's, it was very simple. It's set up and it's a, a no brainer. Um, and being conscious of what you're printing and how much you're printing. I mean, you don't wanna shame someone at your office for printing a lot, probably that's probably not a good idea, but um, I don't know, maybe there's a way that printing isn't so convenient all the time. I know another place that I've worked, the printers, you actually had to get up well here too and walk to the printer to get um, your material that you'd printed off. Maybe that can make an impact. Um, thinking about the water bottle refill stations, I'm glad to see these are far more common now out in public and maybe it's something that your visit, place of business could consider as well. Encouraging, like we've said throughout, just to reuse things. So your water bottle, your coffee mug, um, things that people probably have at home already or heck, I'd be happy to dig in my cupboard and get some coffee <laughs> mugs if you need some, <laughs> go thrift shopping. I think most um, people have these. Yeah. It's just developing that habit. habit. Exactly. Um, or having that refill station so it's easy mm -hmm. and it's good tasting. and So a lot of times it's just thinking differently and um, those break room supplies. Hopefully there's not a lot of styrofoam left floating around, but um, that's one that's really tough for me to um, not be discouraged about. Replacing those disposable items, those stir sticks. Um, Individual packets yeah, of things yeah, that and don't really expire like the sugar, sugar or something. Yeah. Yeah. I know COVID has set us back a little bit, but hopefully we can get back on track soon. Um, and then if you if your business has any promotional items that you give out, I just encourage you and, and challenge you to think about the value of them and what's really useful. And is it something that's just going to go by the wayside, going to end up in someone's junk drawer? Then maybe there's a, an alternative um, mm -hmm. option for getting the word out about your company. Um, and I don't have it on here, but also thinking about things like LED bulbs, if your place of work hasn't switched over to that, um, doesn't, doesn't really apply at all businesses in all rural places, but encouraging biking to work, that's big in the metro, of course. Um, thinking about office materials. So here in the county, each department oftentimes will have a cleanup day and they'll have a whole bunch of binders or staples. I think we have enough staples in Ottertail County for from now until eternity, but, um, or having a set more of a central purchasing, maybe you already have that, or maybe that could be set up. Um, thinking about buying recycled products, office products is always a good idea. Um, and then I think to just try to make it fun we don't want it to be a, a burden, but um, somewhat related, working together. I know I just saw there was a, a trick or trasher size. So it was cleaning up around their building in costumes for Halloween. And it was kind of a, a fun exercise to, to promote the environment and the, their company. So it looked fun. It made me want to do it. Yeah. So just some things that I think are, are good to think about. And um, like I said, a challenge and, and even more than that, a plea to go above and beyond recycling. Mm -hmm. So I will hand it back over to Cedar. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I, it's sort of funny that I put communicate three times, <laughs> but I feel like so much of what we see too sometimes at workplaces or, or for all kinds of things is a lack of communication um, can really, or, or, or good communication can really determine the success of, of a recycling program or really of any program. So um, just a little extra emphasis there because what we see sometimes in workplaces is that lack of signage. And again, that's just a communication piece of telling people what can go in a bin or what bin goes where. Um, and, or an example, of a company we saw where they have a great sustainable sustainability statement on their website, even referencing recycling. But when we see what is getting disposed of in their bins, there is a lot of recycling going out with their trash. And so how are you ensuring that what's 
what's happening in leadership is carrying all the way down. Who are the point people, you know? And so I think some of those problems come from not having good internal communication. Um, and so I'll talk a little bit about both of those, but I just, we, we see, I think again and again, times where communication is not happening. And so recycling is, is not very effective because nobody really knows what to do or, or what's going on, or if it's even happening, even if somebody says it's happening. Um, and so externally, I think it's important to think about cons the consumer uh, viewpoint. You know, I am certainly part of this category of the consumer who is increasingly aware of environmental impacts of their purchasing choices um, and really wanting to make a, a choice uh, that feels sustainable or environmentally responsible. Um, and so you can communicate this externally. I feel like it goes into the benefits Rena was mentioning earlier about showing customers that as a business you care um, is really important. It can improve your company image. Um, and we were talking earlier about something called the transformational consumer. This was in a actually a great presentation put on by someone through Greater Fergus Falls. And they were talking about the transformational consumer where there's a whole like up to 50% of consumers right now are, are looking at purchasing decisions as transformative for themselves and for the world. And they wanna know that their purchasing power is going towards something positive. Um, so I just think that that's really important. So, you know, whether it's social media or, or putting, you know, please recycle messages on your flyers or um, just kind of show, showcase those efforts because people do care. And I think people are just increasingly paying attention. Um, and then that internal internal piece, you know, I think it's important to have that point person for a recycling program or a green team, have that committee or whatever that that that's part of it, or have somebody who it's part of their job actually to monitor what's going on and make sure that sustainability efforts are actually happening and, and being successful. So, you know, include information on recycling or other initiatives in um, in newsletters or communicate that via email because too often we see that it's just not communicated um, and so it's just not working super well. I was a little ahead of myself there. So, um, you know, some good examples of companies that I think are doing a really good job of, of having people pay attention to that positive impact, um, like Tom's, I think they give away a pair of shoes for every pair of shoes you buy. So they're per, this doing good by people um, through making your purchase just makes people feel better about their purchase. Another example is Ten Tree, which is a, these are bigger clothing companies, but it could apply I think, to all kinds of things. They plant 10 trees for every purchase that you make. So, you know, I think these are just things that help incentivize purchasing and helps offset that, um, that feeling of, you know, maybe being guilty about purchasing and having it have a negative environmental impact. You know, you can show people that you've thought through this and you're trying to do the right thing. Oh, another example would be eating at a local restaurant and that restaurant gives a certain amount of proceeds to a cause that you care about in your community. So um, there's just a lot of people that if you've been thinking about that, what good is going to come out of somebody patronizing your business or your service? Uh, people are paying attention to that. And then think about the local impact. I think, you know, thinking about how much waste is your business keeping out of the landfill by doing X, Y, or Z, um, I think can be a really effective way to communicate to people why this is important or why this is a benefit. Because um, sometimes it's so vague, you know, I'm recycling to conserve resources. Well, what exactly does that mean? And so that's partially why we got so excited about those numbers shown earlier about recycling, like the 11 million pizza boxes, because that's tangible. You know, we can just say, please recycle your cardboard. Um, but when you actually get something that, that helps you visualize what benefit that is, um, that's really helpful. So, you know, including some of that language about promoting what recycling gets made into, actually that's shown by research to help people recycle more or take action. Um, there's also a lot of online calculators for showing how much energy savings um, you could have by, you know, recycling an aluminum can. I think the EPA website, Environmental Protection Agency website, has a little calculator. So you could put in a certain number of cans or bottles, and it tells you how long that could run a laptop. So I think there's some great tools out there to help you quantify 
those benefits. Um, and then you can pass that along to employees or customers. And there are even some businesses that have like a ticker on their website that mm-hmm. shows how they're progressing through the year and what impact they're having. Yeah, I always enjoy those. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, So just some specific resources we'll walk through here and then we're definitely gonna have some time at the end for questions and conversation um, and giving away prizes. Mm -hmm. So some specific business resources that we're trying to build up um, and, and, and just support businesses a little more in some of their efforts is one of those is signage. So um, on our business resources page, um, which is pretty easy to find on the Otto County website. If you just go to ottertocounty.mn.us and you type into the search bar business recycling resources, it's going to pop right up. Um, but we have printable signage on our website and it matches the Otto County recycling guide. So this is all based on those best practices that Rena went over earlier. It's going to have images on there that match the recycling guide. It's going to have images. So it doesn't just say one word recycling because we see that a lot. There's like a sad recycling bin with a white piece of paper that says recycling, like stuck to it with a piece of tape. (laughs) So, you know, sometimes that doesn't really communicate very well what should go in there and how to help people do a good job. So these feature images match up to the recycling guide. They're in multiple sizes and feature different materials on them, whether, you know, whether you're in Purim and Fergus Falls and you can mix recyclables together or you're outside of those um, towns and you have to separate stuff. There's kind of a lot of different variety in that signage. Um, So depending on where you are or the kind of bin you have, whether it's the tall rubber made or a big, you know, bigger container, um, there's lots of options there. So you can print those, download those. And if you don't see what you need, um, we can always resize something or, you know, tweak it a little bit depending on what your needs are. We're happy to do that. You would just contact us and ask. So we've done that um, for places. So this is actually a picture on here from Otterbury Farm. And we did help them get some recycling decals for their permanent containers at the farm there for bigger events and bigger weekends in the fall, because then they can offer recycling there all the time. They did also use some of our event recycling supplies, but now that they have those stickers, the nice stickers on all their bins, um, they're just kind of set up to do that. And so we had made sure they were the right size and and had the right um, items on there for images. And then we've also been working on BYOB, bring your own bag. So for that, we have decals and yard signs because um, we were astounded by how much money like a smaller grocery store, for example, spends on bags that are used for maybe 15 to 20 minutes to get groceries home. We all have reusable bags sitting around. We just need to remember to use them. So that smaller grocery store, um, just one example, I won't name them, but they spend twenty to $30,000 a year just on bags they give out to customers that are used for you know, maybe even 10 minutes to get the groceries home. So let's just use those bags we already have. You can get those decals for your store window. We also have yard signs that look really good. Um, So some businesses around um, already have those in place, but we have more and we're just working on increasing the amount of people using that all the time. Uh, We offer site visits. This actually was us when we went to, is that Shearer's? Yep. Shearer's Snacks um, in Purim there. So we often will do a walkthrough, learn about your business, look at kind of how you have recycling set up, um, give you some pointers, walk you through some improvements, help you access that signage. Um, And we're we're really happy to do that. We can also offer training similar to this, but targeted to your business. So if you ever wanted to have like a staff training, um, we can do something like that. We have a one page sort of quick start business recycling guide, um, printable on our website as well in the same place that the signage is. So that's just like something you could easily distribute to your team to get some of those best practices and information and resources out there um, kind of in a one pager format. And then there's also some external programs that we try and educate people about. Um, I won't talk about this one for a long time, but the Minnesota TAP, MinTAP intern program, it's sort of like a, a specialized intern with professional guidance from like a professional engineer or other appropriate field who comes in, learns all about your business um, and about some of the waste or other issues you have. And they develop solutions for you that result in cost savings. Um, I can't think of a, there's some that are really good in terms of reducing, there was one that actually reduced the sugar water waste from like candy production or something. There's some, if you go to the 
MinTap website, there's some great examples of projects that have really had outstanding incomes, uh, incomes, outcomes, <laughs> outstanding <laughs> outcomes. <laughs> Income, sure. Yeah. Um, so it is not our program, but it's something we try and um, let people know about because it can really reduce waste and um, in a variety of ways and, and result in cost savings too. Some of those are pretty amazing projects. So check that out if you're interested. Um, and last but not least, there's some of our programs that, that touch a little bit more specifically on business waste. So we do have a commercial cardboard collection route. I think we added it up and on that, for that program, it's over 200 stops a week yeah, well at participating and growing and yep. growing um, stops at participating businesses um, around Ottertail County and, and gets that cardboard out. Car cardboard is so big and unwieldy and it fills up bins fast. It's kind of low hanging fruit um, and can save you a lot of money too on, on waste disposal costs. Our household hazardous waste program does accept business bulbs for a small fee. You know, so if you're replacing your, your whole facility, you're taking out those fluorescents and putting in LEDs, we see a lot of that. Um, you would contact us and, and set up how to get those bulbs to us. The film plastic recycling program, we do collect boat wrap from boat wrap storage or boat storage places in marinas, as well as farms um, and places that generate agricultural waste um, from like bale wrap, silage cover, bunker cover, things like that. Um, we are just starting um, in a couple of months here an organics recycling pilot, and that is tar targeting larger waste generators like schools and institutions, um, as well as some grocery and restaurant settings. So food waste is wet and heavy, and we don't want that resource going to a landfill. So we're starting that with just 20 sites, but at some point in the future, it will grow and other entities will have access to that program, but it's kind of exciting. And then bring your own bag, which I did mention as well. Ooh, the important slide. Wow. <laughs> so just like if you just want the quick list at the end, here we are. <laughs> Remember that it doesn't go away. Just be thoughtful because, you know, we, we tend to discard things pretty quickly in our culture. Um, it doesn't go away. It's going into that really, really expensive $70 billion system. Uh, and it's it's complicated. It's expensive. And there's a lot of environmental impact there that we, we could really do a better job at. So just remember, it's not going away. Um, so we need to be more careful about that. Recycle and compost all you can because your waste is really a resource. We need to use it as a resource, not just discard it um, and bury it in a landfill. Not a good strategy. Follow best practices for setting up recycling at work. So go find that one page resource, maybe even share this. Um, we did record this. So you could share this with a team at work, or encourage somebody else to watch it, encourage somebody to reach out to us and come to that site visit or come do that workplace training. Um, encourage and support reuse in the workplace. Maybe that means making sure there's a water filling station somewhere. Maybe that means starting to get coffee or hot cocoa in a bulk container instead of little packets. You know, how can you support um, those, those practices that we all want to see? I already said that one. And then if you're having any, any kind of event or festival, um, you know, connected to work or not connected to work, we can help you figure out how to get recycling happening at an event. So we want to thank you for joining us. So if anybody has questions, throw them in the chat, but we are going to use a random number generator. So if, if people think of questions and pop them into the chat, I'm going to pull up the random number generator so we can pick a couple of winners for donuts and a recycling bin. And I want to thank you all too. I appreciate um, that you're interested in this and I hope that you can spread that enthusiasm to your business, um, your employer. And we were only able to do kind of a, an overview of business recycling. Of course, um, there's an industry that has all kinds of uh, opportunities for impact on recycling um, and waste reduction. And so where that would come in is if we could meet one-on-one, -on -one, if you have very specific things, we kind of touched on break rooms and overall office settings, but certainly we, we recognize that there are opportunities at each business for, for different ways of reducing their waste. Okay, so excluding us, we have our first winner, participant number six, and I'm just counting on our list. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so our first winner is Nancy Papa. 
if you would just want to pop into the chat your place of business or where you work, and we will coordinate with you to get that prize over to you. And number two, the second winner is Amanda Thorson, who was at the top of the list, but we're trying to get winners from both sides of the county. Amanda, could you put your place of employment in the chat? Because we're trying to reach both sides of the county. And then we will touch on the questions. So we'll come back to the prizes in a minute because I'm not seeing, oh, good, awesome. So Nancy, Papa, I want to say, I feel like she might be near Fergus Falls. Maybe confirm oh, that. Oh, oh, perfect. Yay. So our two winners, Amanda Thorson, City of Ottertail, and Nancy Papa, I hope I'm saying that right, at Dunham Sports. How perfect. So thank you. We will get donuts and a recycling bin to your office um, in the next couple of weeks here, and we'll coordinate with that with you. I have your emails from your registration for the event. But let's just check and see if there are any questions. One question is, I read one time that OTC was fifth in the state for recycling. Is that true? I'm not sure what, th there's so many different ways to measure um, recycling, the overall recycling rate from residential or um, total from water to county. I guess I can't, mm -hmm. I, I have not heard that, but I, I'm proud of what we have going on here in Ontario County, whether we're the film yeah. or somewhere else in the line. Yeah, I think in terms of rural counties or, or outstate, I guess, apart from the metro, I feel like we're greater uh, Minnesota, part of greater Minnesota, <laughs> however you want to say it. I feel like Ottertail County well is kind of tr trying to be on that forefront of, of um, having there. robust programs that get waste out of the landfill. Um, so, you know, I feel like that could be true. If you're just stacking it up, probably the Metro counties probably still have an edge on us. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot of people closer together. So it's easier to run like curbside programs, for example, or just so much easier to do when people are, it's just door to door versus driving miles between each resident. Um, so there's some other things that play into that. But I do feel like as a rural county, we do a pretty good job and we're only getting better. Any other questions? Because we are right on time. I know maybe, oh, yeah. Another person just, yeah. Thank you for popping that in the chat. Enormous amount of plastic wrap um, and film plastic. And some of that, depending on what it is, could probably go through a film plastic recycling program, not, not the boat wrap one that we were referencing, because that is for thick LDPE plastic. It's a very specific kind. Um, but there are other companies, like Trex is an example. They collect that film plastic. I think similar to what you're talking about, they collect that from like grocery store settings, retail settings. And that gets recycled into a plastic decking type material. Um, that's what the local lines groups have been um, looking at. So it might be helpful. We could maybe link you up with, um, with if, if that would be suitable for that program or because they're actually working with tracks for their film recycling program that they've had going on now for six months. Mm -hmm. They do extra collections and, 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 um, I've been working on that. Do you have any yeah, other thoughts as, about that? As far as our, our current programs to Ottertail County, we don't have a market for that, but um, oh, Ottertail Lines just great. received their first bench. That's great. Awesome. But yeah, we could certainly look into that and see if that would be a good connection. Great. So we'll get back to you on that, Nancy. Yep. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, we really appreciate people wanting to just learn a little bit more um, and try and, you know, all of us are just trying to make one improvement, you know, one at a time. You can't do it overnight. Um, I'm certainly not perfect, I'm not. <laughs> um, but, you know, just, just bit by bit trying to make those choices to um, decrease that reliance on landfilling and make sure we use our waste as a resource. And, and so we just appreciate people wanting to be a little more involved in that. Yes.
Thank you. Reach out if you have any questions. Thank you.